Good afternoon. This is Pastor J.W. Smith from New Salem Missionary Baptist Church, 2186 Hawkins Mill Road, Memphis, Tennessee, 3127. Uh, we thank you again for joining us today uh, as we prepare to uh, bring to you this Sunday School Bible Study lesson for the week, June 21st, uh, 2020. Uh, this lesson, again, uh, receiving wisdom gifts, receiving wisdom's gifts. Uh, we're closing up this first unit, Wisdom in Proverbs, uh, of the Summer Quarter, the Many Faces of Wisdom. Uh, we're getting ready to um, move toward the, 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 the latter, latter lessons in this unit. Um, but we're dealing with wisdom, the many faces of wisdom. How does wisdom look, the godly wisdom? How do we recognize the wisdom of God versus the saying or the tradition of men in the world? Uh, and in this first unit, we're looking at the, the book of Proverbs. Amen. We find them, uh, we can find wisdom in Proverbs. Again, the, the Proverbs are written primarily by King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. But he also includes uh, in his writing a collection of Proverbs written uh, by other uh, men of godly wisdom. Uh, we thank you. Uh, those who do not know, uh, we do have the notes to accompany this lesson, and I, and I did them on, on actually two sheets this time, so you would have a larger print and be able to see uh, better if you're looking at them online. They are on my page, and these same notes are on the New Salem Missionary Baptist Church Frazier uh, Facebook page. Uh, while it is on my mind, I will not be doing a live stream next week. I apologize. But due to a scheduling conflict, I will not be able to do a live stream next week. Uh, we ask that you, however, remain diligent to your lesson. Uh, as you look through uh, your Facebook pages on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights, you find uh, many excellent teachers. Amen. Teaching the word of God. Amen. Uh, we th we're thankful that we have a God. Uh, a savior who's able to send many teachers, just like he sent more than one prophet. He sent more than one teacher. No one of us has all the knowledge. No one of us has, has cornered the market on the word of God, but he has sent many, amen, to be received by many. God has a teacher for everybody. Uh, and so I just do want to alert you to the fact that we will not be uh, doing a live stream. I'm not sure if I will have the notes up or not. Uh, stay tuned, however, but again, the notes for today's lesson are on my page and they're on, on the New Salem uh, uh, Missionary Baptist Church Frazier webbook page. Again, we thank you for taking time out on your lunch break on this beautiful day uh, to, 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 to partake of the word of God. Uh, we have a, a another good lesson before us. We're taking a survey of chap Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs chapter 8. And we're looking at receive wisdom's gifts. Uh, there are benefits. Amen. Wisdom is a blessing in and of itself, but uh, the wisdom uh, also comes with ancillary blessings in addition to the wisdom. Amen. Now, the ultimate goal of wisdom is for us to get to know God, to get to know God. The ultimate goal of science uh, is creating a, a universe or world where man no longer has to work. Amen. Uh, where everything is done for him. But the wisdom of God, the ultimate goal is to get us to know God and to know God's way. Because uh, in the final analysis, God is what's best for us. The church father Augustine said that man was made for God and he shall not find rest until he rests in him. Uh, we were made in his own image. We were made for his good will and pleasure. And we were fearfully and wonderfully made. A little Lord than angel, crown with wisdom and knowledge. Amen. It's shouting time. I'm not even in the lesson yet. But we are in the book of Proverbs chapter 8. And the general subject is with, receive, receive uh, wisdom's gifts. The basic introduction for this lesson, uh, as with last week, they're the same as the last two weeks' lesson. So you can go back and refer to those. Again, those two are on my Facebook page and the church's Facebook page. You're able to look back at the introduction to get a better understanding of the time of this writing and the writer himself. 
Uh, but again, in this, in today's lesson, receive wisdom's gifts. The call to follow the path of wisdom continues. We were still making her call. Uh, as the book opened, it opened in the person, in the personification of a man talking to his father. And as I uh, indicated to you, that it's about a relationship. So it's not about just father and son, but the wisdom of God is good for everybody of all ages, of all times, uh, of all conditions and all circumstances and all social economic statuses. So it, it is it is an open call uh, to follow the path of wisdom. Uh, and uh, in the further lessons, wisdom is personified as a woman. Uh, it's personified as a woman making a genuine appeal to, to the world to come unto me to find rest. Amen. To come unto me because my way is a better way. My way is a safer way. My way is the way that is closest to God. But conversely, just like wisdom is personified as a woman who's making a genuine appeal, a real appeal for your safety, folly, wisdom's adversary is personified as a seductress, amen, seeking to lead men into destruction. Folly is that thing that appeals to us, amen, like the, like, like the daughters of Cain appeal to the sons of Seth when God told them to stay away from them because they're worldly, and there's something worldly about thing that a world that entices us uh primarily because we were made from the dust of the earth so it is no 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 surprise that the things of this earth fascinate us they intrigue us it has a drawing on us we're so drawn by the earth that we're dominated by it we were dominated by the weather we feel differently uh in the rain on a rainy day than we do on a sunny day we feel differently in the spring than we do uh in the fall or in the winter than we do in the summer because we are dominated by the weather. The old folk used to tell me all the time that they could tell when it was going to rain because they had something on their body that aches. And I used to laugh, but my father had a saying. He said, boy, keep living. Amen. And I, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you now that I have lived long enough. Amen. That there is a weather forecaster in me. Amen. There is no weather forecaster in you yet. You thank God. But if you keep living, I promise you, there is a weather man in your toe and your knee also that will remind you of what's going on. Amen, somebody. And so wisdom is calling out. Amen. To lead us unto life. But folly is calling out to lead us to destruction. And folly leads, calls us with a call, amen, that appeals to the flesh in us. Wisdom calls us with a call that appeals to the godliness, the, the, the godliness in us. And so in order to receive God's wisdom, we have to be able or prepared, amen, to move to a higher standard. If you desire to be stuck where you are, if you like it where you are, Amen. It's doubtful you'll find wisdom because you begin to be content in your own ignorance. That's the world we live in today where men and leaders are content to live in their own ignorance. Uh, as a result, when they go in circles year after year, decade after decade, century after century, reliving the same old trials and tribulations. Why? Because we refuse to elevate ourselves to the mind, to the mind of God. The writer declares only a fool says there is no God. And so in this world, day I see a lot of foolish people because even in times such as these when we're troubled on every side we still seek to ignore the power and the will and the presence of an almighty God amen to 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 pursue answers the same answers that we've sought before to the same problem and we pursue them the same way amen but again this plea from this wise man Solomon from this wise book of wisdom uh, the book of Proverbs calls us, amen, as a woman making a genuine appeal, amen, to turn from my way of wickedness, wicked thinking, wicked walking, and wicked work, amen, to begin to follow the true word of the almighty God. So again, we're in chapter eight of the of this book of Proverbs, and uh, our, our general subject uh, of this Sunday school lesson, new international Sunday school lesson, is receive the wisdom receive wisdom's gifts amen there is a blessing uh in serving the word and following the word of the true and living god in verse eight this is wisdom speaking as a woman making the genuine appeal all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing forward or perverse in them 
all the words. This is a she 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 she's making a a a, a collective call. She's saying all of the words, all of her words. Uh, coming up into this verse, she has spoken of her words as being excellent, as being right and true. And so she has us to know in verse eight that all the words of wisdom are excellent in the sight of God, a right in the sight of God, and a truth in the sight of God, and by God's standard. She's, she lets us know that wisdom itself is never disobedient. It never calls us under disobedience, and it never calls us, us to be led by self-will, because those are the things that turn us away from God and lead us unto destruction. Her words include nothing false. There's no false, nothing false in her words. There's no twisting of the truth, and there are no omission of important details. And, and that's very important uh, that we understand those qualities of wisdom, that there's nothing false, no twisting of the truth, and no omission of details, because we have a habit of doing that, uh, omitting things uh, and adding fine print to contracts uh, in order to get people to follow us, because uh, we don't always have the, 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 the best intent. And so we tend to leave things out of, or slightly tint the color of something so that the, 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 the other person does not get the truth picture. If you recall in Genesis 2, 17, uh, where the Lord was speaking to Adam and he said, of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. He said, but the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat, for in the day thou eat, thou shalt surely die. Well, he, those were the explicit and, 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 and strict instructions that God gave Adam uh, in the garden. But as we come to uh, Genesis 3, just one chapter uh, one chapter later, we find Eve being, uh, uh, in, she's encountering the serpent, and the serpent comes her asking that question, and we see Eve has the detail slightly twisted. Amen. She said that God said, yes, yeah. she said, God says that God asked you that, say that. She said, yeah, he said that we should not eat nor touch. For in the day thou shalt surely die. And it was that one word, that slight twist, uh, that slight uh, misinterpretation of detail that allows sin to enter the world. And whenever we don't have God's explicit word, amen, God's explicit word, then we run the risk, amen, of disobeying God because one word has the ability to change of a whole sentence. Uh, if, if, if you're a grammatic specialist, you can take a comma or so you can even take just simple punctuation and change the meaning of, of, of what of what a word says. And so she says in the words of wisdom, you can rely on it. It's just like ivory soap is 99. Well, it's actually 100 percent pure. No matter how you cut it, no matter how you flip it, no matter how you turn it, uh, it's the same inside and out. Amen. In it, there is no guile. There's no falseness. There's no twisting. And there is no omission, which I mean, in other words, this is what she's saying. She's saying you can bet your life. Amen. On wisdom. And, uh, and and that's how it is with the word of God. When it comes to the word of God, you can bet your life on it because all things exist by the word of God. Amen. Somebody in verse nine, uh, she says, speaking of the words of wisdom, they are all plain to him that understand it and write to them that find knowledge. She says that when you're talking about wisdom, you don't have to argue or debate. Amen. Because wisdom speaks for itself. If you're really seeking truth and knowledge, amen, you'll find wisdom uh, begins to make sense to you. Uh, wisdom does not make sense to those who are not trying to find God's way. Because the Bible said that natural man cannot understand the things of God, for they seem foolish to him. So if you're coming from a godly perspective and dealing with a person who does not know or desire to know God, you find yourself in an argument that leads to nothing. Amen. So you, you, you have don't have to deal with that because that person without the Holy Spirit in them is not even unable to understand or receive the words of God. Uh, and so he's saying here, she's saying here in this verse, the wisdom is plain and straightforward. Uh, wisdom has a pure motive. It has no hidden agenda. Wisdom does not seek to boast, its, lift itself, uh, but it seeks to lift those who seek it. Uh, and the word appeal, truly appeal to those who uh, seek understanding because they make they make perfect sense. And then the value of wisdom is obvious. Wisdom carries some benefits with it that's obvious to the person who seeks knowledge. But don't fool yourself. There are those 
amen, who, who don't seek wisdom because they, they are the ones who seek to deceive, who seek to, to, to be cunning and crafty. The ones who seek to throw rocks and hide their hands, they don't seek um, godly wisdom. And they'll always come up with a reason. They'll always come up with a but. No matter what the word God says, they have a but. No matter, they always have an excuse clause or an escape clause for whatever scripture you read. And though, and, and so the, the word will never make sense to them. Why? Because they have not been born of the spirit. In order to receive God's word, you must be born of the spirit. And then it's a spirit in you that makes God work where it makes sense to you. She says, so it's plain. Look at what Isaiah says in 35, 8. He says, in highway shall there be, that's wisdom, a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. That's wisdom because wisdom teaches us how to live God's way. He says, the unclean shall not pass over it. Those are the ones who have unclean motives. Amen. They will always find a way not to obey God's word of wisdom. He says, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, the seekers, though the pursuers of life through the word of God. He said, though fools, amen, shall not err therein. Amen. Sometimes it may seem foolish to the world that you follow God and you give him time of God that you can't see. Amen. Or you can't touch him. Amen. But you, you you can't touch him, but you sure can feel him. Uh, if, if you've really been born again, you cannot physically touch God. But Lord in heaven knows you can feel him when you call upon him. And to pray to an unseen God, to feel an unseen God, to worship an unseen God, to give an unseen God. To some men, it sounds foolish. And so he said, though fools, they shall not err. Because what does the scripture say? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. Amen. That is one of the blessings of wisdom. He says in verse 10, he says, receive my instruction uh, and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. And so look what he's saying. He's saying the world seeks after knowledge. The world seeks out, I'm sorry, the world seeks after choice gold and the world seek after silver. Amen. Everything about this world, everything about the material, the materialism in us teaches us to seek after those things that we find value. And worldly people find value in worldly things. Let me say that again. Worldly people find value in worldly things. So you need to, don't try to show your spirituality off. Amen. To worldly people because they see no value in that. Amen. Worldly people see no value in what we do in serving the true and living God. Worldly people only respond to worldly things. They are cheer about things of this world, but they won't cheer about things of God. Why? Because the things of God make no sense to them. And so he says in verse 10, he says, the wisdom is to be chose above all the things that we hold precious in this world. Amen. There are many things we hold precious in this world. Fine houses, fine cars, lots of jewelry, lots of money, uh, things in our arm. We love bling and we don't love blessings. We love bling. And let me help you. There is a black difference between bling and blessings. Blessings make you look good in the eye of God. Bling make you look good in the eyes of men, but only what you do for God will last. So wisdom teaches us to choose bling, to choose blessing over your bling. Amen, somebody. And so he says it's to be chose above things this world, but he acknowledges that things this world may be hard to refuse. He said, but even though th these worldly things may be hard to refuse, yes, there are some things that are in this world it's hard to say no to. He says, wisdom is of greater value and produces more genuine joy than those worldly things. My grandmother told me the same thing that make you laugh. Amen, somebody, will make you cry. Mm -hmm. The same thing to make you laugh, that's a worldly thing, will make you cry. Because guess what? The value of worldly things do not last. Everything in this world will, 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 will rust out, rot out, wear out, or run out. Amen. If it don't run out, it'll wear out. If it don't wear out, it'll rust out. If it don't rust out, it'll run out. So you can't trust anything of this world. Only what you do for God will last. 
Amen. So he said, above all that getting, amen, get understanding. Above all that getting, make sure you get wisdom because wisdom will even teach you how to better manage those things of the world that we begin to see. So he said, wisdom is to be chosen, amen, above everything of the world. And, and, and listen, it's easy to say, to look at somebody and point a finger because they can't stop doing something. Amen. It's easy, let me just say this, and this is wisdom speaking now. It's easy to stop doing what you don't do. It's easy to stop doing what you don't like. So you get no credit for not doing what you don't do. You get no credit for not doing what you like, what you don't like. But the credit and the power of God is demonstrating in you denying yourself. Christ said, if you come out to me, you must deny yourself, which means you must learn how to stop doing the things that you do and stop doing the things that you don't like. Amen. The person who never smoked a cigarette. Amen. Can't fuss at the smoker. Amen. One person smokes cigarettes and don't drink. One person don't drink and smoke cigarettes, and they spend their whole life talking about each other because they won't quit. It's easy not to do what you don't do, but it takes the power of God to stop doing what you do, especially those things you do naturally. In verse 11, he goes on to say this. He says, because when you look, look at it and you begin to make comparison, he says wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with it. Wow. Okay. Let me put it in this perspective. Just like Peter learned on the Mount of Transfiguration, we compare no man to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, he was sleeping. He woke up when Jesus finished talking to Moses and Elijah, let us make three tabernacles. And God shut heaven up and said, this is my beloved son, here ye him. Amen. We are not, amen, to speak of men in Christ on the same level. Amen. Because there is no other person, no person, amen, no one, amen, that compares to our God. They're not to be put on the same level. By the same token, the writer is saying here, let us not put any, any earthly thing, any material thing on the same level we put God's wisdom on. Amen. There is no knowledge in the earth. There is nothing in the ground, nothing you can dig up, nothing you can manufacture that's in this world that's more important than wisdom. And so he said those things in this world, we should not even compare to wisdom. He says rubies and the riches of this world are amount to nothing. The sum total of all those things, amen, all the earthly value, amount to nothing when we compare it to wisdom. Excuse me. I have, I'm having dealing with a sore throat, so I have to uh, keep my throat moist. Uh, look, what, look what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 2, 8. And Solomon says this. He says, I gathered me also silver and gold and peculiar treasure of kings and, pro and provinces. I got men, singers, and women singers. We like singing. The delights of the son of men, musical instruments, and of all that sort. I got everything, all everything that, that, that make me feel good and want to pat my feet. He says, so I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. I had money and wealth, and my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever my eyes desired, desired, I kept not from them. So if my eyes saw it, I got it. I didn't have to go shopping. I wouldn't want to shop and I went in the store and got everything I wanted. I would have nothing from my heart any joy. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion of all my labor. Oh my God. But in verse 11, he said, then I look on all the works of my hand had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And guess what? Behold, all was vanity, vexation of the spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. He said, nothing I bought was worth the price I paid for. I bought it for joy, but it wound up vexing my spirit. 
I bought the stuff that I thought was real, but it was all vanity. He said there was no use for it under the sun, which means it was absolutely worthless. Amen. The sun shines on everything. So when he said it was vanity under the sun, he's saying this. He said there was no use for it under the sun. Amen. Solomon said, I went everywhere. I did everything. I had everything I wanted. And he said, I found out none of it. Amen. Was worth the time or the investment I put in it. Paul goes on to tell Timothy this. He says, the love of money, amen, is the root of all evil. And he said, so instead of seeking the tre earthly treasures, then we ought to see the riches in good works, because the good works are those things, amen, that have value as defined by God. And so he says in he says in Revelation 3, 17, 18, he says, Because thou sayest I'm rich and increased with good, and have need of nothing, knowest not, not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. God said, All you're doing is flogging unto yourself. You think you rich. You think you got wealth because you got the bling. He said, yeah, you may have the bling, but you don't have the blessings. He said, so while you're blinging, you're poor. While you're blinging, you're wretched. While you're blinging, you're miserable. While you're blinging, you're blind. While you're blinging, you're naked. Amen, somebody. Watch this. I, I just want. I just want to put this in 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 in, 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 in your in, in your in your in your spirit. If I take two men, two young men, Amen. One got his car blinging, one got his mouth blinging, and one got blinging everything, even his tattoos blinging. And I take the man, uh, another man, his same age, who does not have bling at all. The one with the bling is more likely to break in your house than the one without the bling. The one with the bling, with the blinging car, is more likely to carjack your car than the one without the bling. Somebody need to say amen. Amen. So he says, stop worrying about blinging in the eye of men and, and, and have some bling to God through good works. He said in, in Revelation 3.18, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou may be as rich, rich for real, that thou raiment may be, that thou may be white, and you may be clothed, I mean clothed for real, and that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear, anoint thine eyes with thyself, thou, that thou may see. He said, the wisdom that you seek in this world, amen, the van of men is blinding you from the way of God. And so he said, out of all these things that you seek in the earth, stop chasing those things and then chase after the wisdom of God. In verse 12, wisdom says this, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of winning inventions. Watch this. I, wisdom, I dwell with prudence. Uh-huh. I live with prudence discernment uh-huh and watch this I, I i find out the knowledge of witty invention in other words i am i find out things that are discreet discreet means undercover i find out those things that men don't understand with that natural mind amen why wisdom amen and right now we need some understanding we need understanding about this coronavirus we need some understanding of why our black children keep killing our black children we need some understanding you all we need some understanding Understanding how to get along in our homes and our communities and our churches. We need some understanding. And so he said, I wisdom, I live in the place, amen, that understand those things that you seek after, that your knowledge will never give you. He said, so watch this. He said, wisdom keeps good company. It keeps the company, keeps company with discernment and discretion. In other words, I teach you how to, to see through things that are not false. I teach you you how to understand those things that blind the natural man because in order to avoid trouble we must be able to recognize it 
Did you get that? If you don't recognize, you never avoid it. So he said, wisdom, I dwell with those things. I walk with discernment. I walk with discretion. I walk with prudence. I walk with knowledge of the witty. Amen. To be able to teach those. Amen. How to avoid some things. David said, that word, that wisdom, oh God, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. He says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the wisdom or the word of God and he delighteth in his way. And so Paul says in Hebrews 5, 14, he says, but be, but strong meat belongs to them of the full age. In other words, amen, the weak Christian can't eat wisdom because it's too tough to chew. So he'll spit it out and get a wise saying of men. He said, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to both discern, to discern both good and evil. He said, the mature Christian, is a discerning Christian who knows how to get around the enticement of the things that draw us in the world. Watch this. This is what the world says about black folk. Amen, somebody. He said, if you put barbecue sauce on any food, they'll eat it. Mm -hmm. Put barbecue sauce on it or fry it. He said, if you put gold glitter on anything of, of anything material, they'll buy it. So we'll eat anything with barbecue sauce on it. And we'll buy anything that's shiny. You missed that. Uh huh. And that's why they market to us like they market to us. They have some division, some special market division to sell stuff, especially to us. Because they know what we like to eat. Yes, ma'am. Hot sauce and barbecue. And they know we love shiny stuff. Amen. And that's how the world, that's that's how that's why we continue to lack discernment. Because guess what? Something of value will be on the shelf. And it's not blinging. And then there's some junk that's next to it that's shiny. It's got chrome on it. That's supposed to perform the same function, cost twice as much. And we are by that. Amen. Why? Because it was shiny. So watch this. We wind up with a whole lot of shiny junk. Are you all are you, are you all with me? And so he says, wisdom teaches us discernment to stop us from buying so much shiny junk. Uh-huh. And so we'll learn how to be able to discern uh the good from the false. We'll be able to see through some things and see under some things. In verse 13, look what he says. He comes back to the same phrase we've been hearing over and over and over again. The, the part that we choose to receive. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. So watch this. He says, fear the Lord is to hate evil. And then he began to list some evils that the Lord hates. He hates pride. He hates arrogance. And he hates the evil way. And he hates the forward mouth. Some of our mouths, Lord have mercy. Uh, you can put up with some folk if they just didn't have those mouths. Amen. And so watch this. He says this. He says, wisdom brings us to the level of reverence and respect of God that causes us to obey him. Wisdom teaches us the majesty and the might of God in a way that causes us to fall on our knees and worship him because we are God. We understand that obedience to his word is always best for us. Amen. And then, so we must learn his ways, his commandments. But in order to keep his commandments, we must begin to hate evil. Uh-huh. Why? Because the first thing he lists is pride. Pride goes before destruction, the heart of spirit before the fall. And the Lord, according to Micah, to do good, love, mercy, walk humble with the God, humble with our God. Micah says that's required of us. And pride perverts a humble heart. Amen. So pride puts your heart in a condition that makes it unusable and uninhabitable for God. Let me say that again. 
Pride puts your heart in a condition that makes it unusable and uninhabitable for God. Amen. So he says, we must learn how not to hold pride. And when your heart becomes unusable and uninhabitable for God, it becomes the foundation for the evil way in your life and the unruliness of your mouth. Amen. You got some folk that'll say anything, anywhere, whatever come, whatever come up in me or come out of me. And that's what they say. And that's those are the words of a fool. Did you all get me? Those words of a fool. Whatever comes in you come out. You ought to have enough sense not to say some things even you think it. Donald Trump. Amen, somebody. You want we want to set Donald Trump out, but we got some folk in uh, who call themselves children of God who will say anything to anybody anywhere. Amen. The Bible said, if any among you seem religious and brightly is not your tongue, your religion is in vain. Did you all get that? Even if you seem religious and you don't brightly your tongue, he said, your religion is in vain. Look at what the Lord says in Proverbs 6, 16 uh, through 19. He said, these six things, the Lord does hate. And I had somebody tell me one time, God don't hate it. God don't hate it. it is, there's nothing God hate. Somebody, somebody needs to start reading our Bible. Some, uh, uh, and Martin Long said, somebody done told you wrong. There are some things. Hey, these six things the Lord does hate. Yes, seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed on some blood, a heart that devises wicked imagination, and feet that run swift in mischief, Six of false witnesses speaking lies, and seven, that seven thing, he that soweth discord among the brethren. I need to pause there because you got some folk in church who made you in that seven thing. They're going to agree with everything you say in publicly, but they're going to go under the cover and call everybody on the phone after the church meeting to get all kind of messed stirred up. And the Lord say, you are the one I despise the most. Amen. Up in your up in your face cheesing. Amen. And as soon as you get out of the meeting, you tell them what you didn't what you didn't like. And you're the only one that stood up. Oh, amen, somebody. He said, You are the one I despise most. If you listen to me, I need you to circle that. That's Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. And take that verse to church and show it to everybody. Amen, somebody. I'm off my soapbox and back in this text. Amen. Verse 14, he says, so this, you've been listening to the counsel of other folk. That's what Psalm 1 say, blessed the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. But we love being in the council of the ungodly. We'll leave a church meeting and go ask folk who don't even go to church what they think. We'll let he preach a sermon or his study notes and go home and ask a sinner do what they think about it. Help me, Jesus. He said, counsel is wisdom, said counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Y'all get that? So look what he said. Not only does wisdom keep good company of his sermon and discretion. Wisdom carries two blessings, uh-huh, called understanding and strength. Y'all got that? Wisdom carries two blessings called understanding and strength. And if you gain wisdom, you'll get understanding. Uh, you'll understand things that the world has scratched their head over. You get understanding. You'll stop scratching your head. Amen. And then you will get strength. Amen. To endure some things in your life. Hmm. Watch this. Please ask me 719. Wisdom strengthens the wise more than 10 mighty men which are in the city. Wisdom. Amen. The wisdom of God will tell, teach you Amen. How to overcome the enemy of a multitude of enemies. Amen. That's when Psalm 27 say, in times of trouble, he shall hide me, sit him over the rock. Now my head be lifted above all my enemies, which are round about me. You'll be up there on the hilltop praising God. Your enemies be sitting down in a circle wondering how you made it over. 
Amen, somebody. If that one doesn't make you shout, he comes, Solomon says in Proverbs 3, 7, 8, he says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Quit getting yourself in trouble. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. To not fear God is to, is, is to follow evil. Why? Because you're following yourself. And guess what Jeremiah 17, 9 says? Jeremiah 17, 9, you put this in your note, says your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. It'll even fool you. Oh, my goodness. A lot of us are following our heart. Got in a lot of trouble. He said, but if we be not wise and only eyes depart from evil, he says, it shall be a health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Amen. Again, wisdom. Not anything else in this world will bring you strength and understanding. Amen, somebody. We moving toward the end. Then he jumps down to verse 17. In verse 17, he begins to talk about the thing that we see most, that wisdom has to offer more than anything else, and that is wealth. Uh, look what wisdom says. Wisdom says this, says this, I love them that love me. Those that seek me early shall find me. This is what he says about wisdom. If you love wisdom, wisdom will love you back. Mm -hmm. If you love wisdom, wisdom will love you back. I teach all the time that God will respond to you like you respond to him. You're faithful to him, he's faithful to you. You uh, bring him honor, he will bring you honor. You lift him up, he will lift you up. Amen, somebody. And so he says, since wisdom is one of the character, characteristics of God, wisdom works the same way. If you love wisdom, it'll seek you back. And watch this. He says, the earlier you seek wisdom, the better. Now, again, this is our ouch, ver our ouch verse. Why? Because how many of us keep saying, if I had known back then what I know now, I'd be so much better off. But every time I tell myself that, the spirit will remind me that back then God had folk in my life who were trying to tell me, but I wouldn't listen. Wow. And that's what makes me say, ouch. When I keep on saying, if I had only known then what I know now, but the spirit keep telling me, yeah, but you could have known then what you know now, but you just would not listen. Your skin was too thick and your head was too hard. Amen, somebody. But he says wisdom will, will love you back if you love it. And he said the earlier you seek wisdom, the better. Remember, Solomon was young. Amen. God had called kings in, in, in the Old Testament it's at eight years, eight, nine years old. And we got to wait till we get 50 before we get any sense. Uh, remember what he says in Ecclesiastes 12, 1. He says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy, thy youth. Give God some service while you able to give him some service. Amen. Uh, remember now the creator days of youth. While the evil days come not, before your mind all messed up and you're jaded with the world, you're all scarred up, scratched up, beat up, tangled up, beat down, beat up, amen, and, and, and ain't nothing left for you to serve God. Give God more than a soul. Give him a life. Seek wisdom early before the evil days come when I say I have no pledge now. Give, seek wisdom while you enjoy life. If you seek wisdom while you're young enough to enjoy life, you will enjoy life a whole lot a whole Whole lot longer. Some of us enjoyed life when we were young and now we're all paying for it. Hallelujah, somebody. But if you see God's wisdom early in life while you enjoy life, you may enjoy life a long time. Remember, health thy neighbor and marrow to thy bones. The first law promised that it that days may be long upon the earth and that it may be well with thee. What's the use of living to be a hundred years old and, 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 and you blind, crippled, and crazy in 94 of them? Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. And so he says, wisdom will love you if you love it back. So watch this. The goal of wisdom. Remember, we learned last week that the end game of wisdom is to get to know God. Because had we known God's word, we would have never sinned. Remember that one word, that one twist in Genesis 3, 3? 
She put added one word to the word of God and allowed sin to kick in. Amen. But if we had wisdom, we knew the word of God, there'd be no room for sin. So the end game of wisdom is to know God to get us back to God, that we can follow him more closely. But guess what? He wants us to know it's not hard that we make it seem. Isn't it funny that folk don't have an excuse for going anywhere but to church? You can call them to the casino, to the club, to the dance, to what shopping, wherever you want to go. Ain't nobody got no excuse. Amen. But when it comes to church, when it comes to serving God, there's always an excuse. If you got clothes the way to the store, you got clothes the way to church. If you can go in a doctor's office and sit all day, you can come to church and sit 90 minutes. Hello, somebody. Uh-huh. I hear you saying out chat there, but this is the truth. But we come up with all kind of excuses. Why? Because we don't want to do it. This stuff not hard if you make it seem. You can understand Shakespeare and everything Nostradamus, but you can't understand the word of God. You just don't want to know it. If you seek wisdom, wisdom will find you. All you got to do is just ask for it. Uh-huh. God said, I would not hold any good thing. To those who love me, he says in James 4, 2 and 3, you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and you cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet ye have not because you ask not. You're fighting over some, killing folk over some you ain't got. But if you ask God for it, he give it to you. He said you ask and receive not. Because you ask amiss and that you consume it upon your lust. He said the things you ask for, your motive's not right. You asking God to let you hit the power of all. And God know you ain't going to help nobody but yourself. We can't make no fool out of God. The secret things belong to God. You And remember, Proverbs Jeremiah uh, 17 said, we will fool ourselves. You can't trust your own self to do right. How many times you shook your head and said, Lord, how did I get back here again? The things you swore you never do, you did again, again, and again. You can't trust yourself. We are the first fool in our own life, somebody. Amen. I know I, I know don't like this teaching. He said, and so you ask amiss. You ask you going to God for the right thing for the wrong reason. And he still won't give it to you. So it's not hard as we make it seem. All we do is seek wisdom out of a pure heart and pure motives. You still there? Mm -hmm. This kind of stuff make you tune out, won't it? Look at verse 18. Look, uh, am I in verse 18? Uh, he said, if you seek wisdom, you shall find it. Because the Lord says, seek and you shall find. If you ain't got wisdom, it's because you have not been seeking it. He says, which is said, he says, riches and honor. Are with me. Wisdom promises that if you follow me long enough, not the rainbow, you got there chasing the rainbow trying to find a part of gold. He said, rather chase wisdom, you'll find riches and honor. Is that not how Solomon got everything? God goes to Solomon in 1 Kings 3 and says, Solomon, ask what you will, and I'll give it. Solomon said, Lord, God, I just want the wisdom to lead thy people. Not eat. And see, that's a pure motive. It wasn't wisdom to make him look good. It wasn't wisdom to make folk follow him. He said, Lord, I just want wisdom to lead your people so that I can do right by you unto them. This is not even about me. It's not for me. And God tells Solomon, Solomon, you've chosen well. And because you've chosen well, the riches and honor, I will add to you. So everything Solomon got was from God because he asked God for wisdom first. You get that? Amen. He he asked God for wisdom first. Look what look look look, look at Psalms uh, Psalm twenty four three and five three through five. And so, because we got to be careful now when I read that scripture, we got to be careful because some of us think we interpret these scriptures as a guarantee. Amen. And if I do this, it's a guarantee it's going to happen. That is not a guarantee. Again, because your motives have got to be pure. Amen. Just following God out of duty won't yield blessings. We must follow him out of devotion. 
Oh, let me throw this at you again because somebody missed that. Following God out of duty won't yield the high order blessings. That will yield some. But the high order blessings come to those who serve God out of devotion over duty. Mm -hmm. Look at Psalm 24, 3. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? That's the high blessings. Or shall stand in the holy places. That's the blessing, that the, the extraordinary blessings. Uh-huh. He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to vanity, nor sown, nor sworn deceitfully. What he's saying? See, somebody praying for a car to be able to go to church and to bring folk to church. Somebody praying for praying to God for a car to be able to show, show folk how, how what you got it going on. Now you're telling yourself one thing and trying to tell God the same thing you're telling yourself. But God knows yourself. You don't want that new car to blame. You have you have you have have, have no no desire to serve the truth to serve God. You want folks to look at you and say, my, 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 my. And so he said he'd have a pure heart, not lift up his soul in the vanity, and not so not sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and the righteousness from God of his salvation. Not everybody. So what am I saying? Everybody that's doing the same thing is not going to get the same blessing because they're not doing it for the same reason. Hello? Everybody that's doing the same thing are not going to receive the same thing because they're not doing it for the same reason. Come here, virgins, five wise and five foolish. Amen. They were virgins. They had left. They had some all. They were waiting on the bridegroom. They were doing the same thing, but they were doing it for different reasons. And when the reason matter, the five wives are separated from the foolish. Amen. And so when the true matter comes, amen, that's where the sheep are separated from the goat. That's where the drinkers are separated from the lappers. Amen. When you come to when you come to the water, the bitter water, some going to drink and some going to lap. Amen, somebody. That's where the separation comes. Look at look 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 at look at the B portion of verse 18. I'm about to I'm about to wrap this thing up. Uh in the B portion, he say, Yay, not just riches. He says durable riches and righteousness. Only what you do for God will last. Only what you do for God is real. Material wealth is always temporary. Why? Because you can't take it to the grave. And you can lose it just like you gain it. If you don't believe that, talk to those folks who lived through the stock, through the crash of the stock market in 1929. If you don't believe that, you talk to Bill Gates and, 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 and these others uh, when this pandemic hit and the stock market crashed. Uh huh. Because that wealth is not real. See, that wealth fluctuates. Wealth of the world fluctuates with things of the world. That's why gas is $3 a gallon one month and 99 cents a gallon another month. It fluctuates. It's based on how men see things. But he says real wealth, amen, found in the wisdom of God, it can, will never decay, will never be devalued, and you can never lose. Ain't got to worry about nobody stealing it. Amen. And so in Matthew 6, 19, he said, and I, I trade it on earth where the moth and the rust does corrupt, what these break in and steal. He said, but lay up your treasures in heaven where neither the moth nor the rust does corrupt, nor thieves do steal, do break in and steal. Amen. He says, the wisdom of God, no man can take away. Uh huh. That's why John could be exiled on the Isle of Patmos. Amen. And then write the book of Revelation saying, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. That's why Paul and Silas can be put in the back of the Philippian jail and then shackled in the handcuff and then have service. Because guess what? Guess what? They had a wisdom to know that no matter what their condition was, Amen. That God was still God. And that is that is true. That is true wisdom. Watch this. It, it, it's, it's, he bears out in verse 19. And this will help us understand something. He says, my fruit is better than gold. 
yea, fine gold, and my revenue didn't show us silver. He said, I ain't talking about plain gold. And I'm not talking about plain silver. No, he said, I'm talking about that fine gold. The gold is only held in the U.S. Treasury. Amen. In Fort Knox, not the gold you got the jewelry at the pawn shop. I'm about the 24 karat gold and the silver that's so pure, you don't eat off of it. He says, what I have is better than that. And watch this. And so he says, wisdom bear fruit through our life. And that what Psalm says, he's like tree, tree planted by the river of water that bringing forth his fruit in the season, his leash not whether it was ever doing so prosper. Now, let me separate parts that, that verse out because people misinterpret it. Everybody wait on a season. Why are you waiting on a season? When he said, yeah, it does be bring forth fruit in, in, in his season. Uh-huh. That's for you. That's for that's for the world. He said, whatever you do, it should prosper. Whatever you do, it. you don't have to wait on the season because you're prospering all the time. That's wisdom. Wisdom is fruitful throughout your life. But I got to throw a pen in it. Jesus came to save you from sin. He did not come to save you from suffering. Job had wisdom, but wisdom didn't save Job from his suffering. So wisdom did not save us from sorrow, but it navigates us through sorrow. Did you get that? It doesn't save us from sorrow, but it navigates us through sorrow. It keeps you from making permanent decisions on temporary circumstances. What am I saying? In 1929, that in the stock market crash, there were folk who jumped off buildings and committed suicide. But they never took into to, to, to consideration that the stock market crash is only temporary, given time it will recover. Hello, somebody. They made a permanent decision on a temporary situation. Wisdom is at her best in trouble. Wisdom demonstrates its greatest value. During your greatest tribulation, that's when wisdom begins to make the difference. In time of, of, of plenty, guess what? You can't tell the why from nothing why. Because God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But in time of darkness, that's when wisdom begins to really shine in your life. Jesus said, these things have I spoken to you that you might have peace, peace when in time of trouble. That in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I've overcome the world. He says, just wait a little while. And wisdom is what teaches us the patience to wait. Psalm says, they to wait upon the Lord. Uh, wait upon the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen that heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Uh-huh. Verse 19. Verse 19. Uh, verse 20. He says this. I lead in the way of righteousness and in the midst of path of judgment. Wisdom paves the way of righteousness and it lines the path of justice or just treatment. Why? Because again in Psalm 1 6, the Lord knows the way of the righteous. He approves of it. He ordained it. Again, God's path is in God's palm. God's power is in God's palm. God's providence is in God's palm. God's power is in God's palm. So when you follow God's path, you put yourself in God's palm and you are covered by the power, the peace, the presence and the providence of an almighty God. Oh, my goodness. The safest place to be in the world is in the hand of the Lord. And so he said, God knows the way of the, the righteous. That, that That's a way of riches. But watch this. I love how he sums this up. He says that I may cause those who love me, not just those walk with me, because everybody walking with him don't love him. I may cause those who love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. Watch this. Wisdom offers a heritage of generational treasures to those who seek God with their whole heart. Those who seek God out of devotion as opposed to duty. 
Those who see God out of devotion instead of drudgery. Those who see God because they want to, not because they have to. Those who see God out of faith and not out of fear. Amen. He says wisdom offers generation treasures. Why? Because wisdom is something you can pass down. If you don't have any money to pass to your children, you can pass your wisdom to them. Did you get that? You may not have money, houses, or fancy cars, but you can always pass down the wisdom of God, and he will make it available to those who love him. It's a generation treasure. This, Psalms 34, 10 says this, young lions do lack them strong, fast hunters, the killers. They lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. The lion is always hungry because he can't find up food to satisfy himself. He's they always in want, but those who seek the Lord should not want any good thing. But as I get ready to close, who can sum it up better than the Messianic prophet, the gospel according to Isaiah? In verse 40, 28, he says this. This is the wisdom. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth, neither is weary. He don't get tired of blessing you. There's no searching of his understanding. That's wisdom. He giveth power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increases strength. That's wisdom says she does. Even the youth, the young, shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fail. But they, no matter how old they are, but they, no matter how ed educated they are, but they, no matter how poor they are, but they, no matter how tired they are, no, they, no matter how disenfranchised they are, but they, no matter how they've been talked about, but they, no matter how long they've been lied on, how long they've been criticized, they, the outcast, but they, and wait upon the Lord. Yeah, thank you, God. Shall mount up on wings as an eagle. You fly higher than any bird. You can fly over the storm. They gonna run. May look like you got off the right and can't get nowhere, but they'll run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. But they, wait on the Lord, but they that seek wisdom are going to outrun, outfly, and outwalk all of those who walk in the way of the world. God bless you. What a powerful lesson. What a powerful lesson. What a powerful lesson. Receive the gifts of wisdom. Again, uh, we want to uh, encourage you each week to uh, study with us on, on Thursdays at noon. Uh, I will not be here next Thursday, but I, I, well, I will be back the week after that. Our Sunday worship still streams at 11 o'clock a.m. on from 11 to 12 on Facebook. And I, we have it up on YouTube by Monday. Uh, we, can, we can bring your tithes and offerings to the church itself from 1045 to 1215 on Sunday. And we do encourage our members and our friends, amen, to help support our ministry. Uh, we, uh, as you, God will bless you as you bless the Lord. Amen. And then I, we are open for Sunday worship at each Sunday at 11 o'clock. However, we want to remind you, you must wear a mask to enter the church. Uh, we ask you bring wear your own mask. If you don't have a mask, we will have masks available for you at church. Uh, we will, you cannot sit in the sanctuary without a mask on. Uh, we are taking temperatures. We do have people checking temperatures. They don't have to touch you. They have electronic thermometers that, that take your temperature. If you're running a fever, we cannot allow you inside again it's it, it, it we have to we have to look out for the welfare and the safety of others uh we encourage you to have your tithes and offerings ready upon entry of the church so you can drop them off going into the church uh, or coming out of the church because we don't want any we will hold keeping movement within the sanctuary to a minimum so if you would please brothers and sisters come to the church prepared all ready to give upon entry or exit and we at this point in time based on what's going on we're still encouraging the elderly, infants, 
and those with underlying medical conditions, underlying medical conditions, to go ahead and just stay at home and worship with us via our media stream. Amen. We don't, you don't have to have anything to prove to anybody. Amen. If you are elderly, you're at risk. If you're an infant, you're at risk. If you have an underlying medical condition, you are at risk. Uh, you don't have to prove your, your faith to God. Amen. By putting yourself in danger. Uh, God has given us, not given us spirit of fear, of love, power, and a sound mind. And it's that sound mind that says uh, we have to learn how to take care of ourselves. Amen. And once you, we are in the sanctuary, we'll be practicing social distancing. We're making sure that everyone has a mask on, uh, that we're using hand sanitizer, and we're, we're as far apart uh, as we can possibly be for safety because we are following CDC guidelines. Again, we thank you for joining us. Uh, this is Pastor J. W. Smith, New Salem Missionary Baptist Church, Frazier. 2186 Hawkins and Mill Road, Memphis, Tennessee. New Salem is a growing church for growing people going all out for God. May the Lord bless you and keep you.